Don't treat me like a criminal. But never do something like that. So I am innocent. But I'm still guilty by association. The opening track to the new material on Jackson's 1995 History album is a distorted industrial introduction. Ironically known for his soft voice and softer demeanor Jackson opens this new era in his career with a screen, he was no longer going to play nice anymore. The aptly titled lead single, Scream, off Jackson's ninth studio album is not just his comeback to the music industry after his previous album released four years prior, but his reconnection with a world which had banded into two camps those that believed and those that didn't just doing it just to get the pressure off of him. And with a media that only fueled that latter theory in a gag order, Jackson turned to the very thing that made the world fall in love with him, music. Welcome back to Iconic. Before we begin, if you're new remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below for more content like this. With this comeback Jackson spared no missile in his ammunition, coming back with a duet which featured none other than his younger sister Janet. I just want to write yours down. So I'm tired of injustice, I'm tired of the scheme, your lies are disgusting, so what does it mean? Okay wait let me write When kicking me down, when kicking me down, I got to get up. I got to get up. As bad as it sounds. As bad as it sounds. The whole system is it's no longer just another Jackson sibling who appeared in backup vocals, similar to the former PYT collaboration. Now she was a bona fide pop and movie star, having just completed her Janet World Tour which supported her third consecutive number one album and starred alongside Tupac Shakur in the John Singleton directed Poetic Justice. Having his sister wasn't just family coming together for a reunion song, Michael definitely had ulterior motives, most likely to ride the favorable press ways to which his sister whom by this time had much favorable press surrounding her stardom. A reviewer from the Boston Globe remarked, if you're talking about the female power elite in pop, you can't get much higher than Janet Jackson, Bonnie Raitt, Madonna and Yoko Ono. Their collective influence is beyond measure. And who could dispute that Janet Jackson now has more credibility than brother Michael? In fact, by this time Janet had already renewed her contract with Virgin Records for a reported $80 million the following year. The contract established her as the then highest paid recording artist in history, surpassing the recording industry's then unparalleled $60 million contracts earned by Michael Jackson and Madonna. But by this time, it wasn't just Jackson being affected by the allegations and having to get something off his chest, it was also his sister. Janet was set to sign a multi-million dollar deal with Coca-Cola when her brother Michael was immersed in a child sex abuse scandal, of which he denied any wrongdoing. She provided moral support, defending her brother, and denied abuse allegations regarding her parents made by her sister Latoya. Growing up very strict. I mean the stories that you've heard about abuse and all that, that's not true. And I know my sister has said lots of things and, and lots of lies about myself. That bothers me very much for her to say something like that, but I think, I'm not going to harp on this, but I think it's just a way of getting attention, the attention that she didn't get from um, the public. I know she's always, uh, she's never really had the success that the rest of the family really has had, and, and now she's getting, she's being acknowledged by the public, public because of this. and. It's like, kind of like her claim to fame in a sense. Uh, but my parents, they never, never crossed the line. They were never too. Though it could be seen as a sequel to Jackson's Leave Me Alone, which mostly pandered to his 80s rumors and gossip concerning more trivial aspect gossip, like sleeping in hyperbaric chambers and buying the bones of elephant men. In 1993, the relationship between Jackson and the press came to a head when he was accused of child sexual abuse. Although never charged with a crime, Jackson was subject to intense media scrutiny while the criminal investigation took place, but he had already begun to be charged in the court of public opinion. 
conceived around one of the darkest points in his life. The singer began taking painkillers Valium, Xanax, and Ativan to deal with the stress of the allegations made against him. Jackson's health had deteriorated to the extent that he cancelled the remainder of his tour and went into rehabilitation. Jackson booked the whole fourth floor of a clinic and was put on Valium IV to wean him from painkillers. A few months after the allegations became news, Jackson had lost approximately 10 pounds in weight and had stopped eating. The singer's spokesperson told reporters that Jackson was barely able to function adequately on an intellectual level. While in the clinic, Jackson took part in group and one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions. When Jackson left the US to go into rehabilitation, the media showed him little sympathy. The Daily Mirror held a Spot the Jacko contest offering readers a trip to Disney World if they could correctly predict where the entertainer would appear next. Production It was the first time Michael Jackson had worked with Jam and Lewis, although Janet had worked with them successfully on numerous occasions. The album was created with the intention of following half R&B and half pop rock themes, the same themes that brought Jackson success on his prior album, Dangerous. What? I said, that one was... What? The second ooh was not good. John Pirelli's of the New York Times observed on this album, fear has turned to aggression. The music has polarized. It's either clipped, choppy and electronic or glossy and sumptuous, only occasionally trying to combine the two. Most of the time, Jackson sounds as if he's singing through clenched teeth, spitting out words in defiance of any and all persecutors. He's like, how's everybody doing? Great, everybody's great, Mike. Okay, great. Okay, I'll go in and I'm gonna give it a try. Um, the song starts. No! Michael turns into the Tasmanian devil. Woo! He's dancing around the room, snapping his fingers. No! Tired of the injustice! Tired of the scheme! Terry and me, we're like some teenage girls. We're like, ah, it's Michael Jackson, it's Michael Jackson. Like it was like he totally transformed into the superstar Michael Jackson. Me down. He sings the song from start to finish. The host of them sucks, daddy. When the song ends, he just it's silent for a minute. And he goes, How was that? And we were like, Yeah, Mike, yeah, that that was good. He believed that Scream had a similar sound to the music of Janet's acclaimed Rhythm Nation. The media noted that Scream and other songs from the album contained obscenities absent from previous albums. Stop! Stop your breath! Stop your breath! Stop fucking the me! <laughs> music video Michael in fact did not create the concept for the video, which he had often done in the past, but left it to his sister and director Mark Romanek. The video has influences of Japanese sci-fi anime. In the background screens, several clips can be seen of the television series Zillion, and Babel 2, and the films Vampire Hunter D, and Akira. Mark had written the treatment and the general idea was that Michael and Janet were on this large spacecraft. And they were alone. They were getting away from Earth. Michael shot nights, I shot days. Ready? Let's go. Okay. His record company, they would block off his whole set so that I couldn't see what was going on. They didn't want me on set. I felt like they were trying to make it very competitive between the two of us. Release. Scream would debut at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The video premiered in the summer of 95 on MTV and BET and the next evening on ABC TV's Primetime Live during Diane Sawyer's interview with Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley. Scream gained several awards, nominations and Guinness World Records. 
At the 1995 MTV Music Awards, Janet would even wear a shirt which would say Pervert 2 in solidarity with her brother. Legacy. Scream was a creative influence on other music videos such as the 1999 release of the award-winning No Scrubs by TLC. Tyga's 2018 released music video, Dip, featuring Nicki Minaj is also heavily influenced by the video. The music video would have far-reaching influences even in the film industry, despite being known as scary movie throughout its production, the 1996 film Scream, directed by Wes Craven, changed its name to Scream after Harvey Weinstein heard Jackson's song on the radio. The song would reflect several controversial points the stars would have in the next millennium where the world would seemingly attempt to burn the two at the stake of public opinion, whether that be Janet's 2004 halftime show controversy, Michael's 2005 criminal trial. Three months following her brother's sudden death, Janet Jackson performed Scream on the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards as part of a medley tribute to Michael Jackson, who died three months earlier. With the song being an eternal musical connection between not just the two musical stars, but first and foremost siblings. MTV general manager Stephen Friedman stated, This is not something that just came together. We felt there was no one better than Janet to anchor it and send a really powerful message.